Turn you over on the bus from, from Open God. You can get into this either from Open God or a few weeks ago we did the one that we <coughs> take down from the high single. You can also get into it from there, from various other positions. But like I say, we're going to work it from Open God. So Graham's made a mistake here already because he should be controlling my hands. Okay, if he hasn't got a hold of my hands, I'm going to start working the pass. So from here, gravity's pants there, okay? And I'm going to turn this hand so that those knuckles there go right into the fleshy part of his knee. So just underneath his kneecap, you feel a fleshy area there. That's where you want to aim those knuckles in. You're going to have to go to the side where the legs are a little bit longer. If he's got his legs close to my hand, it's going to be hard to pull that leg back. What you want to do is you want to just move back a little bit. If he's starting to extend his leg out, you can go for this. Okay, so turn the fist, and I'm going to do a couple of things at once, okay? I'm just going to jump back, and I'm pushing that leg to the floor, and I'm straightening out my left arm. And as I do, I'm letting go of the pants with the right arm, and I'm shooting it through there, and I sprawl out on top of it. Now, all the time I've got this control, I want those knuckles punching into the fleshy part of his knee. This hand is going to lock around there, and I need to grab the belt. Or just lock on his hip. Obviously, if it's no game, I'm going to lock on the hip. It's slightly different hand positions for the left hand if it's no game. But with the gear on, I'll worry about that later on. With the gear on, I'm going to continue pushing that hand in his knee. Hips down, and I'm strolling it. I'm, I'm drawing right away off of his knee. Okay, it can't be above or below, it must be right off the knee. And I'm very the hip because he's going to try and push my head off to the side that way. Okay, we don't want that to bury the hip, which stops it. When I'm ready, I'm going to back step to there. Notice that I take this hand out. You try and back step and leave that hand where it is. You'll end up right away down on his belly and you don't want that. Okay, so back step. This hand comes out. Notice I'm still punching down with the left hand. Notice all that's touching the floor is the balls of the feet. If I sit my hips onto the floor, the weight comes straight off Graham. I want the weight kept on when I need the weight kept straight off Graham. Okay, so just the blades of the feet, the blades of the left foot at least touch the floor. I can put the sole down on the right one, or you can have the blades of both feet down. Okay, but this hand stays long. This hand here is going to block out his guard as I change my base. But another important point, notice I'm not turning my back and forth. I turn the back and I reach up with his, his right hand or his left hand, he grab the collar, and I've got problems. Okay, you can even hit arm bars from there. So from here, a way to make sure that you're in the right position is look straight between his legs, okay? So from here, now I need to square my base off because I don't want to be in this position. I like fighting from the reverse Kessie Katomi, but this is not the best position for it. I need some control around the top of his shoulder. So I'm just going to give him a second and see what he does because what a lot of people will do from here is they'll take their left hand and they'll push on my shoulder, okay? If he does that, He's allowing me to run, okay? Switch the base, making sure that the whole time you block back the guard, and then send the drop. So we just do that again. So from here, okay, I want to set it up. I'm just going to move back slightly. If he follows me with his leg and it becomes an angle which is greater than 90 degrees, I can put it to the floor, okay? So I'm going to turn that fist so that those knuckles go right into the fleshy part of his leg, just below the kneecap. I spring the legs back, and as I do, I'm pushing this leg long, I'm taking that hand off, shoot it through on his head. Okay? I'm just going to take the pressure off of those knuckles, just look around. But I'm keep it on the whole time, I'll bury the head, and you back step. And as you back step, take this arm out, it's important you take this arm out. Keep turning all the time, look between his legs so that I'm not exposing your back. Okay? I'm going to give him a second, see if he pushes on the shoulder. He may, he may not, but either way I do the same thing, okay? This hand is going to block out the guard before I start moving. Because when I square my base off, I've got nothing blocking out the guard, I'm going to lose the position. So from here, square off. This hand's blocking out his guard. And now I'll have a nice, nice rock around his shoulder. Just one more time. So from here, set it up. As soon as this is greater than 90 degrees, put it on the floor, straight in, from here, back step, see what it does with his arms, wrap around the head, you notice I'll block out his guard with that one, so that when I change my face, I can't cover his guard.
turn the technique off. Okay. If I get it here and it doesn't push on the bike, you just do exactly the same movement. So again, this hand is important, it's going to block out the car. You swing that around his head and it's side control. So this time I'm going to his arm, but that doesn't matter. Okay, I still end up in a good side control position. I just like giving that a little bit of a chance to see if you will push. <laughs> 